Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang from Baylor University. Uh, Happy New Year, this is my first video in the year 2024. Uh, as you may see that I've upgraded my gears and now I can have multiple microphones, one that is intaking my voice and the other um, is recording inside the piano. Um, I want to have a big shout out to uh, Josh White, who helped me uh, answering a lot of questions on how to set up these um, uh, recording devices. Um, he really has been doing great things in helping young musicians and he is very generous when I ask him about these uh, questions. And he and I we went to the same music festival in year 2010, so 14 years ago. Um, a great musician, great teacher, and really a, a very, very nice fellow. So I really want to thank him in helping me uh, and also in helping my audiences. Um, in today's video, I will continue uh, working on the Beethoven Sonata, uh, Appassionata, Movement Number no. Two. Um, it is quite an unusual uh, form for a second movement. Um, this whole thing is in a very strict uh, variation form, which really doesn't happen that often. Uh, most of the time, a second slow movement. Uh, it will be in a da capo aria form, meaning you have a whole statement of a, a long singing melody, and then you repeat the whole thing, but with your own ornamentation, right? This is, of course, from the uh, Mozart opera era. But here we have a 16 bar uh, variation, and we do this um, from a very, very basic chord progression, one, five, one. Followed by four, one. And then one, five, one. Really just right. We really just have uh, three chords, which really uh, is a great case of of, of Beethoven saying um, the very essence of music is the harmony. It is not just pretty melodies, right? Because this is not a melody. Really, you have two notes in the melodic line. And of course, in the second variation in major 33, we have this almost melodic like. Right? Or you might also argue in major 49. However, if instead of playing broken chord, we do da, 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 block chords, it's exactly the same as the very beginning. And also, even when Beethoven turned the 16th notes into 32nd, yeah, it's the same. Right? It's, it's almost like the very, very basic element turning into fancy forms, but then we can never forget they're just the very basic element. And also, within the very beginning first A measures, um, there is a conversation of three chords. Three chords asking a question answered by a three chord progression. Asking a question got answered by 
yeah. And of course, uh, there is no dynamic markings on each chord, but we all have to know the chord here, the tonic, it's not as intense. And this dominant chord, we have to expect something a little bit more. So it's really not the chord itself, but how do you get from one chord to the other? A lot of this has to be uh, our imagination. But when you have that expectation, that's how you can connect notes. Right? Um, Horowitz once said, music, uh, uh, when you're playing, where is God? God is not on any note, but it's in between notes, right? So we can easily just play notes without connecting them in our head, but it really shows. And the other very good evidence is how can we play major five that sforzando followed by a piano? We can't just bang it, it, it doesn't uh, seem right. So we have to really imagine that sound to be almost like out of control. And then regret right after. Yeah, because I think my understanding of a sforzando followed a pia by a piano is that it's supposed to be piano, but then somehow you're overexcited, or the composer is overexcited, he wants you to show it's almost like you're out of control, you, you bang that note, but then you regret right after, okay? And the other thing that is very, very important is to show the double dot. It's the not dotted rhythm, it's not one, two, three, four, one, but then da 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 right? So it's a 32nd note which means we have to feel a more closely connected with the following note, not the note before. And, but, resolution. And this is a very interesting German augmented six that leads us back home. Five, four, one. And here in the next part, and as I said, the main theme has 16 measures. So there is like an eight major first part and then an eight major second part. And within the second part, we have major nine, 11, 13, exactly the same. And then we have measure 10, 12, and 14 almost the same rhythm, same harmony, but each time it's slightly higher. Right, we go from D to F to A flat. It's almost like, you know, Beethoven was trying different uh, chord uh, positions. Um, but what's the message behind this? It's the unchanged versus the development. So this beginning measure nine is unchanged. It's something that always come back the same. And this is the changing or the seeking out. And then it's always coming back unchanged. So keep it flat. And this time you go a little further. Now, that's the biggest leap. But then at the end, it's soft. And then how did Beethoven um, vary different sections? Um, one of the biggest tool he used is rhythm. Yeah, so I mean, since we already have chords and we have broken chords, so here what's going on is that left hand and the right hand between the two hands we have syncopated rhythm, and that also creates tension. And here we have to feel this A flat going up to the G flat, it's a seventh. You have to 
teaching that with effort. before we had a seventh leap now it's two octaves from this G flat to the ta G flat so it gets harder and harder now it's not just two octaves but then with a ninth melody but then let's not forget this is one two five back to one with these kind of uh, tonic dominant tonic so we can't play them as a flat uh, melody or simply just sing without considering the intensity of of the harmony the harmonic tension has to be reflected changing from 16th now to uh, 30, uh, 32nd and also uh, the right hand has the syncopation and then when the syncopation disappears although it's forte but it's more relaxed and then syncopated and then relaxed For this part, one of the biggest challenge for young musicians and even for a professional musician is how to stay in the same tempo. From the very beginning, we have quarter notes. First variation, eighth note. And then the next variation, sixteenths. Yeah, and then the next one, thirty second. Yeah, so just you kept multiply by two, having more and more notes. But then one common mistake is that when you have more notes and when this going from block chords into a melodic like pattern, we like to sing and go forward and to rush. So um, very often we hear in competitions uh, when when the kids get to the it's already a completely different tempo so what we want to make sure is before we start the beginning and the beginning everyone tend to start a little slow yeah so um we want to think about uh, major 49 the tempo of major 49 and when we have this melodic broken chords with the syncopation <laughs> our tempo so when we reach the climax with this fortissimo we're going back to the same tempo and this is really a kind of a common thread in the romantic era that the beginning and the ending are the same right it's kind of a life is a circle kind of uh, mentality so here after the development of this um, beautiful theme and then we're going back to where we were Two, three, four. but then yeah what's coming next the answer 
is one octave above compared to the very first statement. So I guess it has a deeper meaning to it instead of one, two, It's a different tone. One, two, one, two, one. And that's the old questions. And then the new answer now has new meanings. So, um, really, from learning this movement, um, what we're, we're, we're really seeing the very essence of Beethoven is that, um, yes, melodies are uh, great if you have beautiful melodies, but then the most important element here is rhythm and harmony and the changes between the intensity and then relaxation, because after all, all music starts, or most of the time, starts with tonic chord, and then they go through different development, different changes, and then they finish in tonic chord. It's almost like this whole sonata is a lifelong journey, and then it ends from where it began. All right, so I will see you next time for the last movement. And then I will promise you, I won't be taking uh, too long for the new update. See you next time.